Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, I hear you. Hallelujah. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Somebody said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, my, that my first lady is ready to give God glory. Somebody said, he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of that same sun. God, we thank you for your mercy. Let's go before the Lord's uh, throne. The great Father, we love you. Yes, God. Oh, God, we need you today, God. We need you in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, in our soul. Oh, Father God, we thank you for what you've done all this week. You kept us, God, when we didn't really deserve to be kept. While we were yet in our sins, God, your word said you died for us. And we thank you for it, God. If you never do another thing for us, God, for what you've done already is way more than what we deserve. I give you glory, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to inhale and exhale. God, we thank you, Lord, for just keeping the ATOP family, our city, and our country in, in spite of what's going on. God, we're still here. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, just for lifting us up, God, on another Sunday morning, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We need you today, Father. Somebody is watching this on, on their computers, on their phones. I don't know, Father. But somebody needs a song. Somebody needs a word, God. And I ask, God, that you touch each heart, God, that is looking, God, that's ready to receive, God, that is right there, Lord Jesus, saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Touch them, God, at the point of their need, God. You are a need meter. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that you anoint this praise team as they sing to the power of God come down. God, they still believe that when praises go up, yes, God, blessings will come down, God. We know we need you, God. Anoint us, God, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, anoint the musicians. Oh, God, yes, you know it. They have the skill and the ability. But, God, they need anointing power now. Hallelujah. To make them Superman. God, anoint their fingers, God, on the high sound and simple. The keyboard strings and the organ. God, anoint them, Lord. Oh, God, do it, Jesus, for the videographer, for the sound man. Everyone under the sound of my voice, God. Help us to realize that when we leave this place, that we have been revived. Yes. For another seven days, another 24 hours, God. Oh, God, we bless your name, Jesus. And we gladly lift our hands and shout, glory. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Do it for us today. All we can say is, we need you, Lord. Somebody shout, Lord, we need you. Hallelujah. In the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Stand on your feet in the house this morning. If you're in the kitchen, get out of the bed. Stand up on your feet and give God some praise. Let's tell him this morning, you're all I need, God. You're all I need, God. Thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you, God, for bringing me through another week. You're all I need. Come on, who are you? Breathe. 
won't you do me a favor and click tag and share this virtual service so that others around the world in this city and in this country can uh, view what you are viewing this morning. I promise there's going to be an awesome word from the Lord from our pastor on today. And I invite you to invite others to experience what you're experiencing. Amen. And I'd just like to remind you also that uh, each Sunday in the Christian church, we observe the Lord's Supper. So if you have not prepared your um, bread and your uh, uh, wine today, please do so to partake with us as we commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. There will be no video announcements on today, but I will do them verbally on this morning. Just a few reminders. Don't forget that um, on tomorrow, uh, we will have our Bible study, 6 o'clock p.m. We are studying the exciting book of James. Uh, we will be in the second chapter of James, and we will go as far as we can. So tune in via uh, live stream or Facebook Live on tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time for our weekly Bible study. And then you can join Bible study on Wednesday by dialing in uh, live uh, to our conference call. The number is 712-770-4010. You will have to put in the access code 718-422-POUND in order to access Wednesday uh, Bible study. So if you're not able to catch us on Facebook Live on Monday, please dial in on Wednesday. And then on Tuesday each morning, we have uh, join us for prayer uh, with Dr. Murray. And you can join us for intercessory prayer on Wednesdays also. Uh, the dial in number for inspirational uh, word with Dr. Murray on Tuesday mornings at 7 o'clock a.m. And then you can dial in on Wednesday evenings at 8.30 p.m. for prayer. The number is 605-475-3220. And that excess code is 412-771-POUND. Come on and power up with us uh, for prayer each Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. or each Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, don't forget, we're going to honor our graduates at the end of this service, so please do not log off. We want to honor uh, our graduates and support them and congratulate them in a very special way at the end of our service on today. So stay tuned for that. Well, God bless you, and thank you again for joining in with us. Well, somebody say amen if you can. Those of you who are viewing, go ahead and give God some thumbs up and some hand claps of praise because he alone is worthy of all of our praise. Even as we continue in worship, we praise God for Lady Kim just sharing with us those announcements and we hope that you will act accordingly. But we know that each time we gather as believers, we want to gather around the altar Whatever, wherever that altar might be in your home, why don't you stop what you're doing and just pause for a minute and position yourself to hear from God and also to give him your request and your petitions. For the word of the Lord declares that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And we here at ATOP believe in the power of prayer. Won't you join me as we go to God in prayer? God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We bless you and we honor you, and we yet give you praise. For you alone are worthy of all of our praise. God, you are a praiseworthy God, and we can't help but thank you. We can't help but bless you. We can't help but honor you. We can't help but lift you up. Because you said in your word that if we but lift you up, that you'll do the drawing. And, oh, God, even today, virtually somebody needs to be drawn closer to you. Somebody needs to feel your power. Someone needs to feel your presence. Someone needs to feel your peace like never before. So God, we pray that you will move even through this virtual worship experience, that you will lift up our day, that you will encourage those who are weak, and God, that you will build up those who are torn down. 
And so, God, we thank you that you not only hear, but you answer our prayers. You said in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said you'd be with us always, even until the end. And so, God, we thank you for your promises today. For your promises are sure and your satisfaction is yet guaranteed. And we know that there's absolutely nothing too hard for you. So, God, whatever needs might be present over this virtual service, even in the sanctuary today, we pray, the Lord, that you will meet those needs and that you, O oh God, will show yourself strong on our behalf. So we come expecting that you're going to do what you said you would do. We come believing that your word is true, that your promises are sure, and your satisfaction is guaranteed. So, God, we speak to our situation by faith. And we call those things that be not as though they already are. And so we decree today that we shall be healed. We decree the day that we shall be whole. We decree the day that we shall be delivered. We decree the day that we shall have victory in the name of Jesus. And God, so no weapon that's formed against us shall be able to prosper. And so, God, we give you praise in advance. We're not going to wait until we receive it. We're not going to wait until we get it in our hands. We're not going to wait until the check comes in the mail. But, oh, God, we lift our hands and we lift our voices. We lift them to the hills from which cometh our help. For all of our help comes from you. So we decree today that we shall be set free. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed. So God, that, that mother, that sister, that, that husband, that, that daughter, that young person who's viewing today, we don't know their need, but God, we know that you know. So God, just show yourself strong in their situation. That bereaved family, God, who has lost a loved one, God, move in right now and show yourself strong. That person who's deliberating surgery and perhaps a doctor's report this week. God, show yourself strong even now in the name of Jesus. That person who's deliberating the next move in their life. God, step in right now and show yourself strong. So we love you today. We honor you today. We bless your name today. The devil is a liar today. And we claim victory in our situation and in our circumstance. We're not going to give up, but we're going to continue to press our way even now in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said amen. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The other day I was talking to a teacher. I was like, I wonder when we are going back to school, first lady. I was wondering this and I was wondering that. And one thing we realized, both of us said, we can trust the Lord. Now, the will of the school says we're going to go back this time and maybe this time and maybe that. But we can trust the name of anybody in here can say, I trust God. We're celebrating our graduates, and we encourage you to trust in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is the everlasting God. You ought to say to yourself, say, Lord, your will is what I want. Come on, at home on the couch, look at that husband and say, Lord, God's will is what I want for my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God glory. Let's give him a praise. Yes. Yes.
you to testify and say, God, your will is what we want. Hallelujah. We don't know this and we don't know that, but we know you got it all in control. Let me sing it again, everybody. Yeah, yeah. God's will is what I want. 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 Somebody type that in. God's will is what I want. Hallelujah. I feel that in my spirit. God's will is what I want. Not the government's will. Not the Congress will. Not the legislature's will. Not what the Senate has to say. But God's will. Not the Democratic Party. Not the Republican Party. But God's will. Is what I want for my life. Somebody shout glory. Come on, somebody shout glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we do bless the name of our God today. 
and he alone is worthy of all of our praise. And listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. If nobody else praise him, if nobody else give him glory, you ought to lift your hands wherever you are and tell the Lord thank you. He woke you up right early this morning, clothed you in your right mind. What a mighty God we serve. Somebody say hallelujah. Well, we thank God for the music ministry today, ushering us in the very presence of God. And we're certainly grateful for Minister Christopher Paxton as he continues to lead us during this season and how he continues to present us with a praiseworthy worship. Somebody say hallelujah for these very fine musicians as they continue to render excellence even during the down season. And we praise God for the first lady, Lady Kim. Come on, let's give God praise for her. Come on, even if you're watching virtually, come on, praise God for the first lady. And we thank God for this array of volunteers who you don't see who are working behind the scenes. It's about uh, 10 of us here. And we thank God for each of them. And we praise God for their consistency. And we thank God for the A-Top Church family, those of you who are viewing and those who are not connected uh, uh, to ATOP but you're watching virtually, we're certainly grateful for you viewing this particular worship experience. Somebody say amen. Well, there's a word found in the gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, a very familiar passage of scripture. I'm going to start reading at verse number four and read down through verse 15 to get some clarity here. And uh, it reads in verse number four, and when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trampled down and the birds of the air devoured it. And verse number six, some fell on rock. And as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground. Somebody say good ground. Good ground sprang up and yielded a, a crop of a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he, he cried. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse number nine, then his disciples asked him, Lord, saying, what does this parable mean? And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest it is given in parables that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rocks are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root who believe for a while and in a time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who when they have heard go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and good heart kept it and bear fruit with patience. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your word. You've already decreed that it would not return into your void. And so God, we know that it's going to accomplish exactly what you have intended for it to accomplish. And so now God, we pray that you will shake us where we are and awake us and cause us to be in tune with what you're trying to get done in and through us. And now, God, even as I prepare to proclaim your word, take me out of self, hide me behind your cross, that your people who are viewing and those who are in the sanctuary might not see me, but that they might see thee. 
And so now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord God, our strength and our redeemer is in the name of Jesus, even the risen Christ we pray. And those who love God said amen. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk for a few minutes here today from the thought and the theme, the power of the seed. The power of the seed. Not just a seed, but the seed. Because, you know, as I, as I thought about this particular message, and I know you're familiar with it, as I meditated, as I prayed, and as I deliberated over how I would uh, share it with you and asking God to breathe on it, there are a lot of seeds out there that you and I can purchase. There are sunflower seeds, there are sesame seeds, sesame seed seeds, is that right? Sesame, sesame seeds. There are pumpkin seeds, there are flax seeds, there are poppy seeds, there are chia seeds, there are wild rice seeds, there are pomegranate seeds. There's even hemp, hemp seeds. Did I say the hemp? Hemp seeds, yeah. And the list can go on and on. Somebody say, take your time, Reverend. Come on, type that in right there. So take your time, Reverend. But, but the list can go on and on. But the seed I want to talk about today is the word of God. For the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. The word of God was there in the beginning, and it will be there in the end. I want to talk about the power of a seed, a seed that can save, a seed that works not sometimes, but it works all the time. I want to talk about seed power. Come on, somebody type that in, seed power. I want to talk about our most valuable assets as, if you will, as a believer during this season. I want to tell somebody and encourage somebody and talk about how to hold on to what you already have. Because the psalmist would declare, thy word have I hid in my heart. You already have it, that I might not sin against God. So I want to talk about how you hold on to what you already have. I want to talk about power. Somebody say power. Not just any kind of power, but Holy Ghost power to sustain your spiritual growth. I want to talk about the power of a seed. Now, you're familiar with this passage of Scripture. It appears both in Matthew's gospel as well as Mark's gospel. And, you know, Jesus often uses the natural, simple things in life to illustrate, if you will, a very profound message of the gospel. And you're probably well aware of this particular passage of Scripture. And because of this familiarity, I pray that you will ask God to give you a freshness and a new awareness and a new anointing about this word. The Bible says that the seed was sown but fell in different places. In some places, it was unable to sustain growth. But some also fell in what he called good soil. And so I want to talk about three things and lift up three principles here today, and I'll take my seat. The first thing I want to remind you again is that the seed is the word of God. And then the second thing I want to share with you is that the soil in which the seed is planted determines what happens to the seed. And then the third thing I want to share with you as I go to my seat is how you nurture your seed determines your destiny. And so I believe that this word can help us, if you will, with the question of how, Reverend, do I sustain? How do I strengthen that which I already have? Listen, you already have this word in your heart. Make no mistake about it. If you've been around the body of Christ for any length of time, you already have some word in you. And so the question then becomes, how do I sustain it? How do I strengthen it? You, you already have it. And how do you not lose what you already have? How do you hold on and not lose ground, particularly during this season of unrest and uncertainty? You know, as I thought about that, all of us, struggled with consistency. 
if the truth be told, all of us, under the sound of my voice, we struggle with uh, steadiness, if you will, in maintaining that which we have been blessed with. Think about it for a minute. That which we have been blessed with, you know, like with our health, with our jobs, with our relationships. And we struggle with using how God has blessed us to propel us to move us forward and not backwards. And some of us, if the truth be told, we struggle in our spiritual lives. Many of us are going through a roller coaster up and down ride even during this season of pandemic because we have not fully got a good grip on what God is saying to us. And so we struggle. We're up and down. We're, we're all over the place when it comes to the things of God. We're up one day and we're down the next. We're up one Sunday and we're down the next. We're doing okay one Monday, but we got to have a drink that Monday night. Come on, somebody help me right there. And we never seem to have sustained any spiritual growth. In other words, we, can't, we, we never seem to continue to extend ourselves for a, a long period of time without any interruption. So we're always all over the place. So, so we struggle, if the truth be told, and you're honest with yourself, we struggle with relationships. We struggle in our obedience to the things of God. We, we struggle in our stewardship. We struggle in our service to God. And I believe that in this passage, it will help us in our struggles and teach us how to understand and utilize the power of the seed. I just believe that God wants us to be fruitful. Now, normally when you plant a seed, uh, you plant it in soil, good soil, you can expect something to come up. Am I right about it? Do I have any farmers? Do I have any gardeners in, who's listening to me? Come on, give me a thumbs up right there. Because I believe God wants us to grow. And growing, my brother, growing, my sister, means having a level of consistency in your life. And so in this passage, Jesus addresses the issues of why sometimes people are not consistent. So how, Reverend, do I sustain my spiritual growth? I don't want to go back, Reverend. I'm, I'm falling short already, but I don't want to go back to what I used to be. I don't want to go back doing what I used to do, but I want to move forward. Is there anybody who wants to move forward? I don't want to continue to be up and down and all over the place. I want to be sustained so that I can go forward. Well, what is it? What does it take in order for me to be sustained? Well, Jesus uh, tells this parable about a sower. And he says, this sower goes out and he sows some seed. He begins to sow seed. He sows the seed out. And the seed, the parable tells us, lands on various types of soil. Now, keep in mind, the seed is the word of God. And based on the soil that it lands on, it determines the result of the seed. Somebody help me right there. Now, there are some common components in this story that you're probably already familiar with. But the first common component is the sower. Somebody say sower. The same sower. Because look at it. Jesus tells a parable and he says a sower. In other words, it's the same person going out and sowing the seed, sowing the seed, sowing the seed. And listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. Everybody needs to have a sower in their life, somebody who speaks truth to power in your life. Everybody needs a sower, somebody who challenges you, somebody who stretches you, somebody who allows you not to be complacent with where you are, but pushes you to another level. Everybody needs somebody to encourage them. And when they see that you're about to, you're going through and you're about to fall off the cliff, they're going to say something and they're going to do something to help you get out of the predicament that you're in. That, that's, that's. And that's what the sower in this text represents. The person who disperses into your life that which you need to know to move forward. Yeah. 
Now, now, hear me today, and I want you to be clear, and I've said this once, and I think that there need to be repeated again. If you are a member of ATOP, Anointed Temple of Praise, your sower's name is Pastor Thomas L. Murray. Now, you, you might have others who are sowing into your life, but at least every Sunday, every week, even during pandemic, when you tune in virtually or when you stop by this place, guess what? All pastor is doing is, is sowing seeds, sowing seeds. And, and, and the seed is the word of God. The word works. Somebody type that in. The word works. It works every day. It works everywhere. The word works. And the right seed planted in the right soil produces victory every time. Oh, my God, I'm getting excited. I say the right seed planted in the right soil produces victory every time. Same soil, same seed. And everyone under the sound of my voice or watching virtually, you will hear the same word. But unfortunately, the results will not be the same. God help me right here. Because there's different kind of soil in which this seed is falling upon. Now, the Bible describes different kinds of soil. They talk about the wayside soil, the rocky soil, the thorny soil, and the good soil. And the question then, as you look at this broadcast, which are you? Yeah. And the point is, everyone hears the word, but everyone doesn't change. Everybody doesn't grow. Everyone is not spiritually mature, but yet you hear the same word. They get the same word, but don't change. And so here's what Jesus is doing. Jesus explains why. He says, because the problem is, it's the soil. The soil determines what happens to the seed. Because here's, here's what happens to the seed, and the seed gets planted, then the seed has to die. And when the seed dies, the shell around the seed breaks open, and the seed will begin to germinate. Roots will begin to spring up, and if it's in the right soil and the right environment, if everything is right, then you're going to get victory every time. And hear me today, when you get the word of God planted in you, and the soil is right. I mean, the conditions are right. I declare and I decree here today, something will change in you. And if it doesn't change, the problem is not with the seed. Oh, somebody better help me. I'm, I'm preaching a little bit better than y'all giving God praise right there. The problem is not with the soil, but the problem is with you, with the soil. And this parable helps us because, first of all, in verse number 5, it says some fell on the wayside soil. It says a sower went out to sow his seed. That's verse number five. And, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. But he explains in verse number 12 what happens in verse number five. He says those by the wayside are the ones who hear. They hear the word, but he says then the devil, the enemy, comes and takes away the word out of their heart lest they should believe and be saved. And you know, as I thought about that, some of us are wayside soil. We hear the word. And before we get home, before we get to where we're going, something problematic happens. And the enemy comes in and snatches the word out of our heart. And, and you need to know that God will plant something in you, my brother. God will plant something in you, my sister, that will change your life. He'll plant a word in your spirit that will change your life and put you in a new direction, on a right direction, and on a right course. But hear me today, just because the word has been planted doesn't mean that the enemy and the devil is going to take a vacation. The devil comes before the seed takes root and tries to snatch it away from you. 
And we need to get that in our spirits today like never before because the more profound and the life-changing the word is, the greater the effort of the enemy to keep that word from being rooted in your spirit and he'll snatch it out of your heart. Somebody ought to say amen. Because the seed, the Bible says, had fallen by the wayside. But he talks about another kind of seed, another kind of soil that is, that fell on rocky soil. The seed fell on rocky soil in verse number six. It said, some fell on rock. And as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Somebody say rocky soil. Come on, somebody type that in, rocky soil. It says, it, it says about rocky soil is that even though there's rocky soil, it sprang up. The seed still sprang up. The seed, this word, is so powerful that it will even germinate in a rock. <laughs> Y'all better help me here today. It will germinate on a rock. Listen, your heart can be as hard as it can be, as hard as a rock. But the word of God is so powerful, it will show life even where there is no good soil, or even if the word is not planted in good soil. But look at it. It says it withered away. Why did it wither away? It withered away because it lacked moisture. And a seed, you know, needs a lot of things in order for it to produce. It, it needs dirt. Am I right about it? It needs oxygen. It needs water, but here it says it needs moisture. God, help me today. And as I started to think about that, because out of all the things that it could have said, it says it needs moisture. And moisture is the representation in the Bible of a couple of things. But it is symbolic of the power and the presence of God. And here's what Jesus is saying, that the seed failed to grow because it didn't have the presence and the power of God. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we have to water our seed. We've got to nurture our seed because how you nurture your seed determines your destiny. So the question becomes, how do I water the word? Well, the word represents the presence, the water that is, represents the presence of God. Not only do you need the word of God, but hear me today, you also need the power and the presence of God. That's why some people can, can quote scripture, but they have no power. Have you ever ran into somebody like that? Well, if you haven't, that's probably you. Come on, somebody help the preacher right through here. They know the word, but they're not living the word. And they never change their lives. Have you ever met somebody who's always in church or always at Bible study, but their life is raggedy and they live like they don't know the Lord? Well, how then, Reverend, do I get the power and the presence of God in my life? You, you get the presence of God by worshiping him. You get the glory of God by worshiping him and giving him praise. That's why we all not wait for somebody to pump and prime us to give God praise because all you got to do is think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. Something ought to swell up in your spirit. It ought to be like fire that shut up in your bones. You can't keep quiet. You got to give him praise because you know that in and of yourself, it was nobody but God. He inhabits the praise of his people. That's where he lives. God resides in your praise. And when you worship God, when you don't worry about who's looking at you, when you give God praise, even if you're only the one in the sanctuary, I'm here to declare in decree that the Lord steps in. And when God steps in, he shows out every time. And some of us are so concerned about what others think about us that we fail to worship God. But the Bible says they that worship him ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. And God has been too good to you. God has done too much for you that you don't give him praise. I decree today that you ought to open your mouth 
you ought to raise your hand, you ought to lift your voice and say, God, I thank you for all that you've done. God, I bless you for what you're doing right now. God, I praise you for what you're going to do in the future. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have there entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Does anybody love him today? Listen, my brother, those of you who are viewing, my sister, he's worthy of all of our praise. And, and that's the moisture that this gives the seed the opportunity to sprout and live. When God plants this word in your spirit and you don't praise him, you don't worship him, you don't give him glory, then you're drowning out the word that he's planted. It's in his presence we must learn to welcome his glory. Let, let God be God and, and give him the praise on and all of the glory. That's, that's, that's why I've learned how to worship him at any time. Listen, I don't have to be in church. I don't have to be here on Sunday mornings before I open my mouth and give God praise. Some of us want to wait till Sunday, want to wait till everybody get back from, from, from this pandemic before we give God praise, but no, you can be at home. You can be driving in your car. You can be uh, in the kitchen getting you some grits together. Come on, somebody help me. I see you right there getting you some grits together. And then all of a sudden, somebody steps into the room with you and you can't help yourself. Has anybody had, I can't help this before? You can't help but give him praise because something begins to move on the inside of you. And you have to open your mouth and you have to raise your hand. You have to say, Lord, I thank you for being God all by yourself. I wish I had about 15 people who were looking at the preacher today who don't mind giving God some praise. I'll praise him in the morning. I'll praise him at noonday. I'll praise him all by myself. There was an old song, Elder, that we used to sing back in the day. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. So I will bless the Lord at all times. Don't play it, Elder. I might just sing it. Don't play it. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, that's how you bring moisture to the seed. That's how the seed lives. You've got to forget about what people think if you want that seed, the word of God, to take root in your spirit. You better open your mouth and give him praise. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul immediately cries out, I've got to open my mouth. I've got to give him praise. I, I, my worship invites the moisture so that the seed might grow up. The moisture helps produce the roots, helps produce the roots. Moisture softens the heart, and the seed can go down real deep. Somebody say real deep. But in verse number 13, and I'm coming to a close, one, the, but the one on the rocks are those who hear, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. They cannot resist temptation. And the thing that took them down before, guess what? It's taking them down again. And you see, you can't tell temptation no without the presence of God in your life. You know, that thing that you you always running away from, that thing that you don't want to see, that's the thing that the presence and the power of God will give you the capacity to say no and really mean it. Somebody say, take your time, Reverend. Take your time. That's all in this eighth chapter of Luke's gospel. Look at verse number 14, and I'm going to my seat. And it says, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. It explains in verse number 14 how that the, they that fell among the thorns are those who when they heard go out and they are choked with cares and riches 
and pleasures of this life. And their seed bears no fruit. Care is my brother, riches, my sister, and the pleasures of life, my brother, can choke out the word of God. When we don't have time to do what God requires of us, when we are not faithful in attending to the things of God, the cares of this world can choke out the word of God. When the only thing you are after is riches and cars and and, and clothes and houses and, and all of that stuff, it'll choke out the word of God. For the Bible says, seek first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. What are you saying, Reverend? Stop chasing after things, but chase after God. Stop letting the things of this world choke out the word of God pleasures and lust of the flesh and the pride of life, all of these things will choke out the word of God and yield no fruit. But then the last thing he says about this soil, he says in verse number eight, some fell on good soil, but others fell on good ground, sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. Somebody say a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he who hears, who he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And I just wonder today, what kind of soil are you? Verse number 15, it says, but the ones that fell on good ground are those whom, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, kept it and bear fruit with patience. Here's what good soil in a noble heart is. A noble heart is that which that wants the truth. Do you really want the truth? Can you handle the truth? Some people only want the truth that they want and not the truth that the word of God presents. Some people will pick and choose what they want if they don't like or they, are, they don't want to hear what you're trying to say. Somebody help me today. And you'll never grow, my brother. You'll never grow, my sister, if you refuse to receive the truth of the word of God with a noble heart. A good heart wants the truth. A good heart wants to please God. A good heart wants to keep this word, hide it in their heart. Keep it means to put soldiers around the word so that the devil won't steal it. Listen, my brother, the devil is going to try to steal this word out of your heart. Listen, my sister, you've got to encamp soldiers around this word because it's necessary to keep the devil from trying to invade what God has planted in your spirit. Yeah. So when you leave here, when you go to the next worship service virtually, make sure, my brother, make sure, my sister, that you encamp around the word that you receive. And say, God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to believe you. God, I know that your promises are sure. If you said this word is going to produce a hundredfold, I believe that it's going to happen. And so no matter what happens between when you leave here or when you come back, put some soldiers around the word. Somebody type that in who's watching. I'm going to put soldiers around my word. That's right. You got to protect this word. You got to moisten this word. And don't let nothing and nobody take this word away from you. Stay with God, and God will stay with you. Wait on the Lord and watch him do a work in your life. Don't let the seed get away. Be the kind of soil hunger that hunger and thirst for truth and righteousness. And I believe when you do that, God will show up, and he'll do something powerful in your situation. Come on and give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Each time we, we hear this word, we are encouraged because there's power in the word of God. It has the power to convict. It has the power to change. It has the power to rescue. It has the power to save. So each time we hear the word of God, whether it's virtually or whether it's 
in present, present inside of the sanctuary, we always want to extend the invitation. Because the word of the Lord says, whosoever will, let him or her come. And I will in no wise cast out. Can I tell somebody who's contemplating and who's deliberating about giving your life to the Lord? That there's power in the seed. That there's power in the word of God. And only what you do for Christ will last. So hear me today, if you're watching virtually and you haven't given your life to the Lord, you haven't committed yourself to the cause of Christ, this is a good day because the enemy is going to get busy. He's going to be active and try to snatch this word out of your heart. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. But if you feel a need to come today, just go ahead and type in right there. Lady Kim and I, we're watching and we're going to pray and we're going to contact you. If that's you today, we want you to give your life to the Lord. Because the Bible reminds us that if you confess and believe and accept him as Lord and Savior, and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, says that you shall be saved. So if that's you today, then we applaud that. And when we come back together, we want you to come. We're going to embrace you. We're going to... Well, we're not going to so much embrace you, but we're going to embrace you in the spirit. Come on, somebody help me. You know, we, we, we used to, we love to embrace. That was one of our main things that we did around ATOP. We, we give you about four hugs before you leave. We're going to have to start pushing people back now because we, we want to be in, in, in good standing with what, it need, what we need to do in order to be safe during this season. Somebody say amen. Come on, y'all help me in here. And so if that's you today, we're going to encourage you when you come. We're going to pray with you when you come. We thank God for the decision that you made even today. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we bless you, we honor you, and we yet give you praise. Thank you now for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, God, for the hearts and minds of those who are ready to receive your word. We bind the attack of the enemy right now, and we thank you, dear Lord, that this seed that has been planted today is going to take root, and it's going to grow up and be productive and bear fruit. So God, hear our cry, hear our plea, and continue to strengthen us along this journey. In Jesus' name we pray, and those who love God said, amen.
somebody say yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God. What an awesome God we serve. Well, even as we prepare to come to the close of this service, uh, we're certainly grateful for each of you who are viewing this particular virtual service and those who are yet present. We have our graduates on standby, and we're going to recognize them right after we receive our tithes and our offerings today. And Sister Mary is coming now. If there are those in the sanctuary who have not already given uh, online, if you prepared an offering to give, you may bring that forward at this time. And those who are viewing uh, uh, on Facebook Live and live stream, we're certainly grateful for your continued support. There are different ways in which you can give. You see them right there on your screen. And we hope and pray that you will continue to support us during this season that we're in. And your consistency has really made a tremendous difference. And we praise God for your faithfulness. And so we know that when we come out of this, that we're going to be better and not bitter. So if there are those who want to bring their offerings at this time, you may do so. And then we'll have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for an opportunity to give. We're grateful for those who had a desire to give today. And we thank you, dear Lord, that the seeds that have been planted in this ministry today, they will go down in good soil and that they will produce a hundredfold. So we love you. We honor you. And we thank you now for being God all by yourself. Continue to bless and strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. And those who love God said amen. Amen. We are so proud to have several graduates on today. Amen. And as we say your name, we would ask that you would come forward on today and receive just a small token of our congratulations to you for the awesome job. Uh, we have several high school graduates and we're going to start with our high school graduates. Uh, each year Anointed Temple of Praise um, gives our high school graduates, um, if they're matriculating on to college, we provide a book scholarship for the first semester. Uh, of their um, college career. So um, today, this morning, we're so proud to have Odyssey Brown. If Odyssey would come forward. Odyssey Brown is the daughter of Greg and Azure Brown. Amen. Odyssey Brown is the daughter of Greg and Azure Brown, and she is a graduate of Power Center Academy. While at Power Center, Odyssey was inducted into the National Honor Society. Odyssey received the Hope Scholarship as well as a Book Scholarship. She has been accepted into the University of Memphis and plans to study nursing. Amen. Her ultimate goal is to transfer to the University of Central Florida and following graduation, she wants to open her own clinic. Odyssey, I forgot to give this to you. Our next graduate, amen, is Christian Cummings. Christian is the son of Tamara Anderson and the grandson of Sister Carolyn Holmes. Christian is a graduate from Pathways in Education and he's excited about his next chapter in life. Christian desires to become a real estate investment broker and will begin by attending real estate school in the near future. Congratulations, Christian. 
Dion Harris. Dion is the son of Kelly Harris and Tiffany Richmond. Dion is a graduate of Houston High School where he excelled in football and wrestling. Dion had the honor of being Tennessee Regional 7A's Co-Defensive Player of the Year as well as Defensive Lineman of the Year. Dion was also Regional Champ in wrestling and at state level he placed fifth. Dion desires to become a sports journalist and will begin his new chapter in life by attending the University of Memphis. Congratulations, Dion. Kaya Webb. Kaya is the daughter of Jimmy Webb. Kaya is an honors graduate of Ridgeway High School. While attending Ridgeway, she was in the IB program, the Honor Society, Sergeant at Arms for Student Government, and participated in the African American Debate Team. Kaya ranked number four out of 270 seniors from the Ridgeway High Class of 2020. She received more than 20 acceptance letters from colleges all over the nation, but has accepted a full scholarship from, the, from Tennessee State University where she will be attending in the fall. At TSU, Kaya will major in chemistry with a biochemistry concentration and plans to further her education at Meharry Medical College and become a self-practicing psychiatric pharmacist. Congratulations, Kaya. Kiara Woodland was unable to be here today because of her work schedule, but Kiara is the daughter of Keisha Woodland and the granddaughter of Sister Sherry Frazier and Brother Jerry Frazier. Kiara graduated from South Haven High School and will be attending the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff in the fall, majoring in nursing. Her goal is to become a registered nurse, just like her grandma. Now for our college graduates. Sister Shonda Frazier. Shonda! Sister Shonda is a graduate of Southwest Tennessee Community College with an associate degree in general studies. Inspired to make a difference in the lives of young people, Shonda plans to pursue higher education by attending the University of Memphis in the fall to major in secondary education. Congratulations, Shonda. Jalen Friendly. Jalen is unable to be here today, but Jalen is the son of Tanique Holland and is the proud graduate, I'm sorry, Tanique Hale. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me rewind that and start again. Jalen is the son of Tanique Hale and the proud graduate of DePaul University. Jalen received a BA in communications and is an OR Fellow working with Zotec Partners in Indianapolis, Indiana. Zotec is one of the largest privately held healthcare software developers in the country. Jalen has already begun his career at Zotec, and so his mother is here today to accept in his place. Congratulations, Jalen. LaShondria <laughs> Kimmins. LaShondria, as we affectionately call her, Sean, received her BS in nursing from Baptist College of Health Sciences. She is currently working as a nurse at Regional One in the labor and delivery area. LaShondria is striving for her ultimate goal to become a women's health nurse practitioner. Congratulations, LaShondria. Those are our ATOP graduates for 2020. We are so proud of them, and we are just happy, 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 and overjoyed to present them with a little love from Anointed Temple of Praise. Amen. Amen. I forgot my communion over there. 
We're going to prepare our hearts and minds to receive communion on today. Each Sunday in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus on the cross by partaking of the bread and of the cup. When Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, there on the table was bread and there was wine. He took the bread and he broke it. After giving thanks, he said, take this and eat, for this is my body which will be broken for you as often as you as often as you come together, this do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In like manner on the table, there was a cup of wine. After giving thanks, Jesus lifted up the cup and said, As often as you gather, drink in remembrance of me, that the blood that will be shed will be a reminder for my sacrifice on Calvary. Let us drink together. Let us pray. God, we thank you today. We, pr we thank you for the precious gift of your blood and of your body that was broken on the cross that we might be redeemed of our sins. We ask that you would continue, oh God, to keep us as we go forward from this day. And let us always be mindful of what Jesus did on the cross that we might have life everlasting. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise wherever you are. Hallelujah. Again, we just want to say congratulations to all of our graduates and to remind everyone to tune in on tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock p.m. for Bible study, Facebook Live or live stream. And then on, Monday, on Tuesday, I'm sorry, for our, our youth uh, Bible study, as well as um, um, Inspirations in the Morning with Dr. Murray. And on Wednesday, again, for um, Bible study at 12 noon, and then Wednesday evening at 8.30 for prayer. So thank you so much for tuning in today. We love you. We certainly miss you, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lady Kim. Well, may the grace of God continue to keep you until we meet again. And you be blessed and have a joyful and wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen.
Leave them.